All right, we're going to be looking at a few questions to prepare you for your quiz on logic. We'll start with number one, where we've been given these three propositions, P, Q, and R. The water is cold, the water is boiling, the water is warm. Now we need to write a sentence in words given this particular set of symbols. So it starts with a not P, so that means the water is not cold. And then it says and, that looks like an A, so and, not Q, so the water is not boiling. Now at this stage we've been given a uh, forwards arrow, which we know is an implies or an if-then situation. Everything in front of the arrow is the if part. So if the water is not cold and the water is not boiling, then, and it's followed by R, the consequent, the water is warm. All right, part B. The water is cold, so we need to translate this into a logic statement, like in this notation. It says the water is cold, so that's P, if and only if, which is the English way of using the equivalent symbol. Okay, so basically if I write P is equivalent to Q, I would say this in words, P, if and only if, Q. And because it's a double-headed arrow, another way of thinking about this is if P, then Q, and if Q, then P. All right. So as it turns out, actually, this so that statement, if P, then Q, and if Q, then P, it turns out that this statement right here, which means the same thing as this, so if you were to build truth tables for these two things, you should find that you get the exact same truth table structure, and we know that that would be called a logical equivalence. Anyway, back to here. P, the water is cold, if and only if. The equivalence, it is neither boiling nor warm. All right, this means it is not boiling or warm, right? It's neither of the two things. So, it is not boiling or warm. Or warm. So, it is not boiling or warm. And I guess you could have interpreted this in another way. We could say it is neither boiling, so we know it's not boiling, nor is it warm, meaning and at the same time it is not warm. So it is not boiling and it is not warm. And so just like De Morgan's laws would allow you to distribute the negation to the Q and the R and the middle symbol would flip, we could interpret this statement to also have been P if and only if it is not boiling, and it is not warm. Okay. Uh, all right, number two. Oh, and by the way, I've got a uh, little truth down here. This is straight out of your formula booklet. This is what you would be given on uh, an assessment or, or the actual IB exam. So we'll use it as we go through these truth table questions. We need to copy and complete the truth table. So we've got P pointing to Q. Now we know that when P is pointing to Q, the only time we ever get a false is when the T, the, po the P value pointing to the Q, we've got a T pointing to an F. In every other circumstance, the imply symbol gives you a true. So we're just going to single out the T pointing to Fs, which occurs right here, P pointing to Q, T pointing to F, that's got to be false, and T pointing to F, that's got to be false. Everything else is going to have to be true, because it's not a true pointing to a false anywhere else. All right, now, Q pointing to R. So let's just figure out where are we false. T pointing to F, all right, column Q pointing to column R, T pointing to F, that's a false. And I have another T pointing to false down there. That's a false. Everything else is true. Not R. So we're just going to negate the column R by turning everything into its opposite. Now let's combine all three of these columns. We're taking the first column we built 
and the second column and the third column. Remember that the and is only true if all of them are true. And so this is going to extend to when we have multiple propositions that are connected with ands. Only if they are all true do we get a true outcome. And in fact, the only place that they are all true is at the bottom. And everywhere else, one of these three statements is false. And because of the and symbols, we need them all to be true to get a true outcome. So that false would disqualify it. We negate the column P by turning everything into its opposite. And it's filled in the last one for us. I guess we can just verify that this is the big column that we created here. And we're pointing it to the not P. So let's see if we have any T's pointing to F's. And of course, the only T we could possibly have pointing to an F would be down here, but no, it's pointing to a T. So we end up with, of course, what's the name of it? We know that this is known as a tautology. Okay, so the significance of the truth table would be that uh, we got a tautology, meaning that the argument is valid. And if you're going, what, what argument? OK, look, have a look at this notation up here. What have we been building here? We built an argument, didn't we, where we have this proposition and this proposition, or premise, and this premise. And together, these three things imply this conclusion. You may remember it better, actually, because we, we were also uh, previously writing arguments like this. We were writing P implies Q, and Q implies R, and not R, and thus the conclusion is uh, not P. And so we connect all of our three arguments together, or, uh, or premises, with the AND statements, always with ANDs when you're building an argument, and then it's followed with an implies, so we get the conclusion, therefore, uh, not P. Uh, I suppose we could even play around with this by looking at the P, Q, and R from the previous uh, question. So uh, let's just see if I can find those. Um, all right, so P was the water is cold. So here we have, if the water is cold, then the water is boiling. If the water is boiling, then the water is warm. And But the water is not warm. Therefore the water is not cold. So that would be kind of like saying the argument in words if I was using the PQ and R from the previous question. So uh, the argument is valid because we got uh, a complete tautology in the last column. Number three, let's consider the statement if it's bigger than the square, then it is a rhombus. So let's write in words the converse. The converse we just take the order of the antecedent and the consequent. So if a figure is a rhombus, then it is a square. So there's no negations involved with the converse. We just switch the order. Switch the order. This is the one where we simply negate both sides. So if a figure is not a square, so you see that we're maintaining the same order as the original statement, then it is not a rhombus. And then triple I, it's contrapositive. Now in the situation of a contrapositive, we are going to both negate both sides and we will change their order. It's kind of like the converse and the inverse together happening at the same time. So let's first take the second part and negate it. If a figure is not a rhombus, then it is not a square. All right, and then part B. Only one of these statements in part A is true. Which one is it? Hmm. If there is a rhombus, then it's a square. I think that this is uh, an invalid argument. 
says, look, it's possible for me to create a tree. If a figure is rhombus, I'll draw a rhombus. There's a rhombus because it's a parallelogram. So that is a true, a figure is a Then it is a square. But this is not a square because it's a right angle. So a situation where a T is pointing to an F. This is my example where a T is pointing to an F. So the converse is false. Let's look at the inverse. If a figure is a square, then it is not a rhombus. Well, so if a figure is not a square, then it is not a rhombus. Well, gosh, I think I can still use the same example as above. I'm going to draw something that is not a square, because it doesn't have right angles. So that's a statement. It is not a square. It is not a rhombus. This is a false statement, because I have drawn a rhombus. So I've got a situation where a T is pointing to an F. And thus, so an invalid argument, the inverse is not true. Let's look at the contrapositive. If a figure is not a rhombus, then it is not a square. So if I'm going to draw something that is not a rhombus, that means that my four sides cannot be equal in length. I'm going to have to make at least one of them different in length. And so that means that uh, there's no way I can get a square, is there? If a figure is not a rhombus, then by definition, the four sides are not equal. But a square needs its four sides to be equal. So it's impossible for us to create a T here, but then have an F here. There is no situation where a T points to an F. Thus, this is a valid argument. The only one which is true is the contrapositive. Let's go to number four. P and Q are the statements, Sarah eats lots of carrots, Sarah can see well in the dark, write these in words. So here's an implies, if Sarah eats lots of carrots, then Sarah can see well in the dark. Not P and Q. Right, it's an and because it looks like an A. Not P and Q. So not P. So Sarah does not eat lots of carrots. And she can see well in the dark. Now this might be a situation where we could argue that you could use the word but. Because in common English, we probably would, right? Hey, Sarah does not eat lots of carrots, but she can see well in the dark. At any rate, I'm not going to tempt fate. I'm going to use the word and. And Sarah can see well in the dark. And part C. We now need to write symbolic form. So uh, if Sarah cannot see well in the dark, all right, if Sarah cannot see well in the dark, so that would be not Q, then, so it's pointing to, she does not eat lots of carrots. So that would be not P. All right, and then it says, is the statement that we created the inverse, the converse, or the contrapositive the statement in part A? P pointing to Q was the statement in part A. What is this? Well, we see that we've switched the order of the P and the Q. We've also negated both of them. That is then the contrapositive. Number five. We have to solve plus three equals five. Easy, isn't it? That means if I bring the plus three across, it becomes a minus three. So 2x is equal to 2, and then that means that x is equal to 1. Part B, let's consider that these log statements. So we've got the proposition that this equation, 2x plus 3, is equal to 5. So not P, I suppose, would be that 2x plus 3 is not equal to 5. And Q is the statement that x squared is equal to x. Okay, so let's have this proposition, compound proposition. If 
2x plus 3 is equal to 5, well then x squared is equal to x. Is this compound proposition true? Well, it's going to be true if we cannot find any situation where a t is pointing to an f. If this situation cannot exist, well then yes, the compound proposition would always be true. So let's see, if 2x plus 3 is equal to 5, if this is a true statement, we've already shown in part a that that must mean that x equals 1. If x is equal to 1, is it false that x squared is equal to x? Well, 1 squared is equal to 1? No, that's a true statement. So if this is a true statement, this becomes a true statement. We cannot have a t pointing to an f. It has to be a t pointing to a t. So yes, it is a true compound proposition. Now, I'll just say that if this happens to be a false statement, meaning that x was not equal to 1, let's just say, hypothetically, well, then we've got a false pointing to whatever. It doesn't matter. Anytime false is pointing somewhere, we always end up getting, so if false pointing to T or F, well, that's always going to be a true outcome. Uh, all right, C, we need to write down the converse of this compound proposition. So the converse means that we're going to switch the order. So if X squared is equal to X, then 2X plus 3 is equal to 5. And uh, considering that they didn't specifically say in words, I'm sure you could probably write it just in symbols. x squared equals x points to 2x plus 3 equals 5. And we need to now say, give an example to show that the converse is false. So x squared is equal to x. What is the value of x? Well, it's true that 1 is one possible solution. There's also another solution. What if x was equal to 0? It's still a true statement. So if we had x equals 0, then this is a true. If x is equal to 0, what do we get here? 2 times 0 plus 3, we'd get 3. Well, 3 is not equal to 5. That is a false statement. We have a t pointing to an f. So when we chose x to be equal to 0, we got a t pointing to an f, which was a false example of the converse. So x equals 0 is an example of x that would create a false converse. All right, we'll continue the rest of these problems on the next part of the video.